Okay, guys, and here we have tape transport assembled. Our tape is rolling, see, fast forward. Rewind. And it's smooth and quiet now. I just installed pre recorded tape to see if it plays. And it does play. I still learn that there are so many buttons. So, so see, it's tape playing. Noise reduction off. Like normal position. Okay, timer off. Let's do peak hold. Meter waiting. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's will affect the speed. So I see it holds bikes. When it gets to the orange zone. Oh yeah. And it should be Dolby level. Zero decibel, according to the indicator. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, it's now plays. It's now runs. Next, uh, I will start measuring parameters. Let's see what uh, corrective actions I would like to introduce to it if it's needed. If it's fine, then it's fine. Uh, that would be it for this deck. I hear the sound, it uh, plays nice, but unless I measure, I cannot tell you exactly if everything is good there. Okay, what else? Let's see, pause mode. And here is the mechanism working. You see, it just changes position. Let's pass forward. Rewind. Let's play back. So that's how this encoder works. So far, it looks to be everything fine. Okay, let me continue and see you in the next part. Bye bye. Hey guys, and here I'm see that uh, head sits a little bit low. Okay, take a look. So it's a pause, and you see bottom of the like uh, playback parts and uh, record parts are visible below the tape so see now it's playing and it's maybe half a millimeter but it's head sits lower this will a little bit reduce the deck ability to play in full that was i'd like to fix but this will require to remove tape transport all over again so there is no access to the heat control. Yeah, that's weird. So let me see what I can do. In the worst case, I would need to remove the transport again. Let me measure results. Uh, I might tell you right away that uh, azimuth was uh, way wrong. I had to turn like half of the turn to make sure it will play all tapes properly. Okay, let me see. Moving on. Hey guys, uh, here I'm kind of the test and recording of this Harman Kardon. Uh, what I don't like, I don't see a sinusoidal signal. It's the one I see, it's heavily distorted and it's on both channels. So something is pretty bad with uh, the biasing. So we may see I can like turn on the outputs from both channels here. So you may see that both channels are far from the sinusoidal signal. So let me just bias from the front panel. And you see that it changes level at one kilohertz, but it doesn't change the form. And here I see the level is changing with the bias on 1000 kilohertz. So Samsung is pretty pretty wrong with the bias generator. I just check it up uh, form of the signal just before the uh, filter coils, which uh, blocks uh, bias frequency to get into the output amplifier, and this was fine. 
So there is TP21, I believe, 22 or 2122. Uh, so it's like empty pins there. So I have seen a couple capacitors with green legs. So I probably would need to replace these two guys, at least maybe a few here, and see what else I can do. So the next step would be uh, to refresh caps in the bias area and see what else is failing. Because I don't see any other reasons. Like if I will test the pre-recorded signal from the test cassette, it's, it shows from it's sinusoidal and it, you see. So playback is, is pretty now, pretty fine. Yeah. So the only thing is with uh, bias. Has looks to be fine, but with all these years, it's pretty hard to understand what's, what is failing because it can fail altogether <laughs> in any moment. Okay, let me work more on it. And I will let you know what was the root cause and the reasons. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. One more observation. So, bias frequency is 97 kilohertz. It's not 105. So, I'm afraid I would need to open this box with a bias generator and see what parts are failing there. And here is the second channel. This is a 97. Why? More work than I thought. Let's see. See you. And here, guys, I removed the bottom cover and back panel to have a good access to all the parts. So now I will desolder this bias generator and see what parts are fitting inside. So we'll replace a couple capacitors. So and here is a control board with all the controls solder it and couple other parts installed and these two are level indicator indicator levels adjustment all right let's be working it i'll get back to you soon and here guys i'm opening this bias generator which is implemented as a single module and package it all together and we may see here the famous orange polypropylene capacitor two transistors two resistors and two more one ceramic and one film capacitor here so the most possible fault is this like orange capacitor let me find and uh, replace it and then i will install this model, adjust frequency, and then close the cover later. All right, let me work on it. See you soon. And here I just installed the new uh, 2200 picofarad capacitor. All right, so I will try to solder everything back and see if it will start work normally with the normal frequency and amplitude. Okay, let me do that, and I see you soon. And next step, I installed, and it still shows 97 kilohertz, and I tried to adjust it, adjust between 96 and 98. So something else has failed on this board. So probably this green capacitor. So let me see what I can do with it. See you soon. Okay guys, and after replacing the green capacitor as well, now I was able to set 105 kilohertz right here. So, good. At least with this part, we fix it. Now I need to check everything else. But the main point, like uh, all circuits, all coils and everything I had, everything is tuned for some particular bias frequency. And if this frequency is bad, we wouldn't be able like to get 
a proper magnetic level so let's see the signal if it's improved uh, let me get to 20 millivolts uh, oh it's different frequency sorry and I don't record anything maybe I will try to play with the test tone I right, let me set up I need to connect my generator to see if it's records now without distortion. Uh, here I'm just testing after the output amplifier and it's still distorted, so I will need to see what else. Where is the problem persists? Maybe output capacitors. Uh, you see these capacitors here around this amplifier, so maybe this capacitor is already dead. Let me see. I'll probably replace all this area. See you soon. Well, guys, I'm still working. I replaced all capacitors which has a green legs, and I replaced all capacitors in the records, amplifier and bias generator. And I still don't have a nice sinusoid signal. So it's a source see and it's a tape source tape I, I have to think more what to do with this guy so far it looks pretty strange so we're recording a little bit off on the levels but we can get higher see if we need to so one kilogears zero decibel and it's terrible if I reduce amplitude, so like you see here, it's, it's more or less fine. It's minus 10 decibel, minus 5, it started, and the higher we go, the more distortion I see. So it's plus 2, plus 1, 0 decibel, minus, and the distortion goes away around minus 10 decibel. So, source tape. Right. Let me think more about it, what I can do. Right. I have been playing around with the, with the tape types. So you see on normal tape, 120 is distorted and on chrome tape, source tape, it's fine. So it's definitely a problem with the bias levels. So I will try to adjust use the instruction. Maybe it was off uh, because someone was playing when generator was on the wrong frequency. Okay, let me see. Right here, one kilohertz, no problem at all. <laughs> if I change the bias levels. Okay, see you soon. Okay guys, and here I'm tuning, as I told you, there was like a low bias. So, now it's source. Okay, some reason it's, it's different. Okay, here we have source. Let's make it even. Hi. Source, now switching to the tape. And I may adjust a little bit on the right channel. It's a little bit too high. Adjusting the right channel. Done. So, you see? Source. Come on. Why are my levels jumping so much? And tape. Now it's a little bit too low. It just jumped. Always which needs to be deoxidized. Oh yeah. Let's try again. Source tape. Source tape. One kilohertz. Uh, and it's currently metal tape because it's uh, according to manual. We should start from the metal tape, metal positions, and chrome, and normal. Uh, what I'm gonna tell you, I am already mentioned that this deck has a lower significant, like uh, three to four decibel lower response on 10 kilohertz. 
and when someone tried to adjust bias, they reduced bias to get more high frequencies, but as a result, they got those distorted sinusoidal signal because I can't bias it, will always look pretty funny on the high level. Uh, okay, so what I will be doing, I will adjust frequency response for the playback amplifier to make sure it will be good, and then I will tune up bias, and this deck will record and play perfectly. This may be a different reason. Like, uh, from my experience, this hat is not worn, not looked to be worn. My experience is it's just old. Some hats, when they get old, the internal compound, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, like filling the space between the uh, head coils and the head body, uh, may be like um, getting like in different electrical parameters or magnetical, whenever, and it reduces the high frequency. So what I'm usually doing, I'm adjusting playback amplifier uh, to increase sensitivity on the high frequency uh, to make sure it still will be even. And that's what I will be doing right now on this deck. I will install two adjustment ports and I will install corrective capacitors to make sure it will play, play nice. See you soon, guys. Okay, guys, and here I'm recording and it's a TDK MA tape, metal position, source tape, source tape. Uh, so 400 gears, oops, 10 kilogertz. On MA it does plus one decibel by default and let's measure on Sony. This is a couple decibel lower. Uh, let's see. I and it's source and it's tape. It's having like two decibels more. Like uh, we may adjust it from the front panel. I, it doesn't go lower. <laughs> It's always high now. Uh, a little bit higher. Oh. Uh, let me play around to see what I can do here more. So levels generators needs to be adjusted. You see. And bias. You see it shows like higher bias than needed. No, lower. Let me try to adjust it here, so it can go up and go down, so it should be right here. When we go into the top point, and then return back, All right. somewhere here. Now, let me see. I now levels dropping with this bias, so I need to see if I can adjust levels. Uh, yeah, this all the system where like a uh, mix of the bias frequency and the signal down through capacitor and coil filter. This is the most tricky to tune up. All right, but at least we already have. I tune it up the frequency here, I see two new ports installed, uh, so it already works pretty nice on the playback. Now like on recording I need to play around with it and make sure that these levels will not be jumping so much between 10 kilohertz and 400 hertz. So one decibel on the left channel, like three decibel on the right channel. Okay, let me play around it a little bit to see what I can do. Or uh, I still may try to see if I can adjust on the front panel. Yeah. And what is gets to the maximum on the both channels. Let me see if I can change this. 10 kilogram. Okay. Okay. 400 gears. Okay, now bias is off. 
Oh yeah, let me see. I still like to tune it better. But at this age, it's, it's a lot of work, as you may see, to make them running well. See you soon. Okay, and after a couple of exercises, I was able to tune. So it's 400 gears source, tape, and recording. 10 kilogears, 400 gears. 10 kilogears, 400 gears. So now it's records properly. And I'm ready to try a different tape. Let's see, TDK SA. Now let's try to adjust bias from the chrome for the chrome tape. Switching to the chrome. Okay, let's see levels. Source. Okay, let's do minus five decibel. Okay, it will be minus twenty. Source and tape have to adjust levels on the front panel because it doesn't have any internal okay minus five minus five okay. source tape good now 10 kilogers a little bit too high so let's adjust it high. Come on, let's get to the bare minimum on the levels. Okay, 400 gears, 10 kilogears, 400 gears, 10 kilogears. See, perfect. And it's tape. Good. Adjusted bias for this tape. And the last one, normal tape type. Uh, normal here. Recording. So, 400 gears. So, source, tape. Okay, need to adjust a little bit, right channel. Done. And 10 kilogears, you see the bias is off, way off. Let's adjust it. Wow. Oh, so here is a left channel. And just right channel, don't go over <laughs> than that. Right. Let me see levels now. Yeah, levels. Get off. Again, let's let's try to find the top point. Let's right. go right here. Pretty strange working generator. Yeah, let's see, 10 kilogears. Now it's too much. Okay, one channel. Another channel, just don't go to the proper position. Now levels will be way different. Okay, let's simply play around with the normal tape and we'll get back to you soon. Okay, and after searching how to tune it and playing around, so here we have 400 gears, 10 kilogears. About one decibel difference. See, everything works smooth. 
and we have no distortion. So I was tuning the bias levels, switching between 10 kilohertz and 400 gigahertz, unless they become like even, almost no change. And now you see, you can adjust the bias on the front panel a little bit if you need it higher or lower. Right? And it's on the right channel tape. So you see, you can adjust it now. 400 gears and 10 kilohertz, no difference. And it's, it's adjustment position like 1030. Right? And let's see, by stone. Yeah, I need to adjust the generator a little bit yet. And we would like not generator indicator. So for these levels, we should be good. Uh, see you soon.